Hi, it's Larry Herb, Xbox's Major Nelson. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Xbox podcast. After last week, I really don't know how Jeff and I are going are gonna to hold a candle to what <laughs> you did, Rebecca. Great job last week. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed your time off. Uh, I was busy interviewing some really cool women for yes, International Women's Day. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you did a great job with that. And if you, if you, if you didn't get a chance to... to to listen to or watch the show, please feel free to go back and do it. Rebecca, you've, that was the first show you've hosted like stem to stern end to end. It was, it's, it's, it's exhausting, isn't it? I mean, you got a lot of work to do. It really is. I didn't think it was going to be as time consuming, um, but it, it was, but it was, it was good though. Um, sorry. I don't know if you can hear <laughs> Podcast York. police are coming in and saying, this job is easy. Stop <laughs> pretending it's not. <laughs> That's exactly right. No, but, Sorry, but yeah, it's. Um, I think I'm nearing my one year anniversary with you guys on the show. Um, yes, and so it's, you know, it kind of. I remember when it started. It was Larry. I feel like you've kind of been sneakily adding more and more to my plate because when I first started, it was like, oh, just come on, we're going to talk about the games we're playing. I'm like, oh, okay, great. And then a couple weeks later, it's like, let's have you do an interview. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then fast forward now, it's like, let's have you do a whole show. Like, well, <laughs> am <it's>... I going to be? Planning it's, everything, producing. No, it's just, I, you know, I, I didn't want to overwhelm you because it can be overwhelming. So let's get you started, get comfortable. Let's try an interview. We did that. And now, I mean, with International Women's Day, you are the, you are the perfect person to host it because not only, obviously, you're a woman, but the fact that you've got, you know, all these great connections with some people in the industry. Like, I mean, I think, you know, you know, uh, Britt was great. Of course, you met, you know, you talked to Britt and Jen was a good friend of ours. But let's talk about Agnes because everybody loves Agnes <laughs> from the Minecraft team. Right, Jeff? Oh, I, she said just a couple of things. I mean, there are certain people, and I listened on audio. I, I listen to most podcasts on audio. I realize we, we do focus on the video part of this. And certain people, you can just listen to them talk all day. And Agnes was was one of those people. But I, I want to back up a second to, so first of all, Rebecca, you did great. But I do have a gripe. Uh-oh. And that gripe is, did we have to bring on a guest? Britt, Britt Brombacker, huge fan, blonde nerd, been talking to her for years. I, by the way, she was she was great on the show, fantastic interview. Do you think you can't talk to me about Japanese whiskey? We had to go to we had to go outside of the podcast in order to talk about it. Like I, I was like, I thought we were close, and you were you. I think you specifically said, and I'm going to indirectly quote you here: "There's no one I can talk about." This <laughs> yeah. Okay, and, I, I definitely said that ugh. verbatim. <laughs> Now we talk. I, we talk about every other food. I am <clears throat> my mistake. Sorry. <laughs> wow. We, How about we're back here next time. Was- we're doing a tasting. <laughs> we're doing something of that nature. And um, um, and you know what? We'll invite Britt because she lives in Western. What? Actually, that would be great. All right. Yeah. So, ideas bubbling here. So um, I like this when are you plan. coming? When are you coming back? I want to have you back. I'll be it was back great soon. when we did that show together. Okay, soon. Stay tuned. And you know, when you do come back soon, I think we we did like we did last time. I think we'll do a, a an in studio thing again, so we can all be in the same place. So we'll work on that. But anyway, it's uh, let's get let's get into the to the show and talk about what we're playing. Rebecca, after you, if you have you uh, had a busy week of playing Elden Ring, which I know Jeff's going to talk a lot about in a minute. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so I. Haven't been playing anything this week, but I was going to start Elden Ring. And so I figured, okay, I'm going to watch a couple like guides and like walk through videos first. And I have to say, like, this is actually, I, I don't think I'm going to play Elden Ring. I think I'm really, really enjoying. I started watching, um, like, there's this one guy fighting cowboy on YouTube. And I've oh, yeah. watched like, <laughs> I've watched a lot. He has like an endless number of videos on Elden Ring, but I really like his like narration style and like the way he's playing. Like I've been like reading through the comments. Like I have to say, like I haven't really been. Maybe it's because I'm like uh, old. I don't know. I don't know. But um, I I haven't really been a fan of like watching other people play games. Like I've always been more of the you know I'd rather play it myself. E- but even, it's funny. Like, I find that interesting because you work on. Minecraft, which, which, what is it on YouTube was like a, a, a quadrillion number of hours that have been up there. Some, some ungodly number. So it's interesting, but you, I know you watch some YouTube videos for Minecraft, but you don't really watch them for gameplay generally. 
Yeah, not really. Well, with Minecraft, like there are things I just can't do. Like there are amazing things that people have created, put a lot of effort into, like there's just so much skill. But with a game like Elden Ring, I feel like the, I mean, honestly, like I was already a little bit like hesitant because of the difficulty setting on it. And just, I get frustrated easily. Like when I do play through RPGs, I like to do like the easy mode. And so right. that I can just like kind of play so through story the story mode, and get story through mode. it. Just call it story right. mode. Let's, let's, right. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, but so anyway, I like, honestly, I don't think I'm going to play Elden Ring. I think I'm just going to continue watching these like video walkthroughs because I've really been enjoying them. And it, I feel like I'm seeing a lot more of the game than I would if I were to like try to bother with it myself. So Anyway, sorry. That's like a really lame way of saying I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos this week. But um, anyway, I don't know. Okay, Jeff, how's it been playing? I now, now I will give the impassioned defense. Now, look, I would not consider myself a Souls bro. And I know that yeah. there's sort of like, well, <laughs> look, there is there is sort of, I think, a perception that's like, um, oh, if you're not good at Dark Souls, get good, you know, and and. And that's a, that could be a turnoff for a lot of players, myself included. And it wasn't until a friend sat me down and sort of, I want to say, made me play Dark Who Souls was that? 3. Do I know and who I got that super was? It. it was Andy Lunique, the oh, Andy, sort of gaming yeah. chef. Yeah. And he was, and he literally came over. He was like, I'm going to sit here and we're not leaving until you beat this first boss. And then I did. But then I felt that sense of empowerment. And if you recall, actually, uh, we did, uh, you did a PAX East podcast a panel that you couldn't go to i couldn't go because i had to work but i uh, so so I think it was laura and i right if i recall correctly but i dialed in but i don't know why i was i I was like very like fixated on this boss and i just was fighting the boss playing it while he was doing the podcast right at the end of the panel i beat the boss and i turned the camera around and everyone cheered the whole room lit up (laughs) it was a great moment so and i ended up beating that game like despite all the odds now this is what i will say about elden ring if you don't want to play Elden Ring, I understand everything that you're saying. What I will say is don't let the difficulty get into your head because while the game is certainly not easy, you have more tools at your disposal than you ever have had in a sort of a souls born game as they, they tend to re- recall to uh, tend to, to, to call them. You can summon in friends. You can, uh, you can bring in, I have like these, uh, these undead soldiers that I just ring this bell and they come in and they start stabbing. In fact, last night I was fighting a boss. I had my little skeleton dudes and I basically stand back and I'm throwing spells at it. And this, it was like a night ghost thing. It killed me, but right as it killed me, my ghosts got the final hit it and they killed it. And when I rezzed, it was dead. So I it, reg- it registered the death. You didn't die before it, it registered did. the death. It <laughs> counted. I got the points. I got I got the whatever it dropped. That's fantastic. And I was able to move on to the game. And and there's just sort of a sense of empowerment that you get. I this is how I would I summarize this for a friend. It felt like high school. When you come in as a freshman, you're like, oh my God, all the people are so big, the the halls are so big, it's so crowded. I don't, this is so intimidating. And then like a couple hours later, you feel like a senior. You're walking through. You're like, I own this place. Oh, you, you think you're tough? Psh, dead, one hit. Not that you're not, I mean, okay, maybe. Yeah, but that's after that's, you that's get your head. That's where it breaks down a little that, bit. That, that's yeah. after you get your head bashed into the locker a couple times. You do. It, I, I did skip that. <laughs> but there's that yeah. sort of like an accelerated growth where you go back through the same place and you're like, I can't believe I used to be scared to be here. And, uh, and that is like really, that can feel really good and really empowering. And whenever I felt different, this is like, I think my favorite part of, and you've touched on this, Rebecca, of playing Elden Ring is the community that sprung up to support it and to support other players. So within like in our, like there's some great, um, great web resources. I will say on YouTube, I've been watching Carpo Gaming, um, Moxie has been great. Um, these are the, like the game doesn't tell you a lot. And so I feel no regret, no hesitation to look things up. What does that mean? Where do I where do, where do I go? What's a good build? All this stuff. And cuz it doesn't beat the enemies by doing that, but it like, oh, okay, now I understand. Oh, yeah. I should have dropped down off this bridge and there's a really cool thing that is now increasing my enjoyment of the game. I would say researching the game is probably half the fun. 
it, from what I'm told, or sharing things like, oh, did you do this? Yeah. And like sharing these sort of like, oh, you can farm ruins over here. And I think the community around it is part of the reason, and just sort of the quote unquote water cooler talk or whatever, it's part of the reason that so many people are playing and enjoying the game that might not have played and enjoyed the game before. So if you don't want to play the game, I, because it's hard or whatever, I get it. But I would be more than happy to, and I think other folks on the team, if you want to just like run, like like co-op and just like have fun and bash some stuff. And I think Larry, actually, we we did this. And yeah. you know, I would love to hear from you. That, that was together. Yeah, that was, well, that was exactly what happened. I was playing it and I was telling Jeff, I'm like, wow, this, because I'm not a dark, I'm not the Dark Souls bro. Um, I played a little bit to them, but I, you know, I wanted to play this game because if you look, you know, I'm sure you did the same thing, either folks listening or viewing or, you know, Rebecca, you did this. You look at Metacritic, it's like, it's off the charts. And so I'm like, oh, I gotta, I gotta see what's going on here. And I downloaded it, of course, and I started playing it and I was having, you know, I kind of got into the first area and got killed and the, got killed again and got killed the third time. And so I just, um, For those of you who've been playing, he immediately took on the tree night. And you will know that that's well, just like, there was someone. There was someone right there. I, I was just like, let me do- picking on the senior who's the captain of the football <laughs> team and the weightlifting team immediately, and, and with yeah. predictable results. Anyway, so Jeff and Jeff's like, well, let's do, let's do. I said, Jeff, can we do co-op? And he's like, well, it's a little complicated. I'm like, how complicated can it be? It's complicated. You gotta get enough thing you got to unlock uh the ability to to make a spell or you know you got to do got to i don't remember got to have a crafting kit and then i got to get the right flowers and then i got to be in the right place and put something down and then the moons line up and the stars happen and jeff joins and and then this bird starts singing once i did get in (laughs) what was the experience like oh we had well well and you know i've said this many times on the show that a lot of games are made better by by your friends and co-op but this was not only that, but it was just, we just had a lot of fun. You were, you were showing, okay, do this. Let's hide around here. There's going to be somebody over here. I'm having a great time with the game, but I am moving. Like, I think I've maybe gone a thousand feet radius from when you spawn. Like I'm just staying in that area, just kind of having fun and trying to, trying to figure the mechanics of the game out. You know, I saw, Ooh, there, there's a big monster. Ooh, there's a big crab. Not going to go over there yet. So which class did you guys choose? Oh boy. I don't even remember. I, I seriously, I, the, the second, the second box over, I think is what I did. I look at it graphically. Uh, I'm a confessor. Um, I decided I want to do like sort of ranged abilities. So there's sort of like a, a wizard or a, a sorcerer type of build that uses magic. And then I, which I did for dark souls three, I want to say, and then, uh, or something like that. And then confessor uses faith. And, um, I don't know. So I was like, let me just try this. And now I've, I've got this like spear of lightning I can chuck at people. I've got this black flame I can I can summon a dragon's head and use it like a flamethrower. That's awesome, you know. And 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 I don't know. It can be it it. This is this is not a game that beats you down. I think this is a game that empowers you. You just might have to go through some tough knocks and sort of learn the hard way from time to time. But I I don't. I'm finding it very rewarding in a way that. I did not expect to. This is a game I wanted to try out, but now it's it is the only thing I want to play, and I will see this thing through to the end. And I'm enjoying every moment of it. And it's so, also uh, it's, it's, so it's, I, it's, then I can stop talking about it. It's highly rated. People, it sold a ton of copies. It's doing quite well, from what I understand. But Jeff, you've got something actually if, there that the the team sent you. Is that accurate? I mean, you you did you said at the beginning of the show I have something to show you. So let's go to that. Yeah, let's full see screen. it. Yeah, let's. Larry, I don't have. I don't have white gloves, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. These are, I think these are a size small. Uh, so it's a little, a little snug, oh but uh, this, so you see that box over my over shoulder. Uh, left shoulder here. Yep. That's, that's what this came in. They sent me the, El- <laughs> this is not the, El- <laughs> the Elden Ring collector's edition. For Xbox Series X, I don't know what's in it, so I want to unbox it. And we're gonna do it here. To, uh, we're gonna do it li- on the show here. We're gonna do it on the show. Can we? Oh, let's do it. Let's. I mean, you're full screen. The show. The floor is all yours. Rebecca and I will sit back and and you can. Yeah, yeah. This is very entertaining. So I think you have to do the thing that all the unboxing influencers do. They usually have like big sabers. I just have a box cutter. But um, for the first of all, yes, is this 
Ooh. So this is the collector's edition, which is uh, it's a it's a it's a meaty it's box. Huge. So there's a, there's a lot of stuff in here. A uh, uh, hardcover art book, a physical version of the game, a steel book, a statue of uh, Melania, who everyone tells me, and I'm not there yet, is like the toughest boss in the game. Uh, so, and I think showed up in the initial trailer. Do you remember when Elden Ring was announced during E3, Xbox E3, like 20... 18? 17, 18? Yeah. It's amazing that we're here now, and it's even more Leaning amazing. A blade of it has completely lived up to the hype. All right. R- r- well, rarely do games do that. So this is, this is first of all, thank you to the, the teams for sending this over to Jeff for his unboxing. Boxes within boxes. I don't get to do this too often. So tell me, give me, give me feedback as I'm doing this. Am I doing this wrong? Um, boxes that look like, oh, okay. So first we have- You're doing great. This book. I have this helmet now, so I feel like a real, a real badass that I have this wolf helmet right now. I'm definitely going to want to flip through that. All right. Um, I, I, the art style in the game is is really odd. You don't think of a game like, sort of like Destroyed Beauty, I guess is what I would call it. Destroyed Beauty. All right. Well, I, you know, there's like amazing vistas, and but it's not colorful necessarily. All right. Now we have another thing. Here. By the way, the uh, the rubber gloves are selling it. Little Thank you. Yeah. Uh, by the way, like yeah. a, the grip here, I could like palm a basketball. Right. <laughs> I, 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 exactly. Feels almost. Un- I feel like they're wide receiver gloves, which um, American right. football this looks reference. like a box that's going to sort of have like a stage open. So let us do that. Ooh. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Ooh. Oh, oh, look at that! Look at that! Yeah. That I believe is Melania, the. Um, the boss that I have not yet encountered, but that is a badge uh, that is waiting for you. About she looks difficult. Ten inches tall. So yeah, she looks. She doesn't even. She doesn't need to see you. That looks like an award. Like, if you can bust it, it looks like an award. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, that's a very good point. Please don't drop. Please don't drop. Okay. An Oscar, an Emmy, or a game award. It looks like one of those. Oh. I feel like there was a Digimon that looked like this back in the day, too. Oh, look at that, yeah. <laughs> it was an honor to be nominated, but I just, first of all, I would like to thank my family uh, for winning this podcasty. Is that a thing? Sure. Um, yeah. Oh, and it is not articulate. Does the arm come off? Well, if you, if you break, it looks, I think that her structure is articulated, but I don't think this is meant, this mm. is not an action figure. Right. Per se. This, She's going to kick my ass at some point, several hours down the line. All right. All right what else break. we got? There. Okay. Um, well, there, there's multiple boxes here. I'm sure people have done this so, unboxing there, already. So let's... I'm sure. So then there's a giant box here. <laughs> Where, look, like, Larry, I am making up for years of unboxings you've gotten to do. Oh, my this God. This is his there's first a... unboxing. Let him have it. I'm, I am. I'm letting him, I'm letting him <laughs> breathe. There is a. I'm going to go grab a sandwich. <laughs> This is hard. By the way, I think that box contains one of the things that I despise in my life. And that is styrofoam. Yes. First of all, certificate of authenticity, 971. So there's only 6,000 of these. Right. Um, I looked on Amazon, this collector's edition. There is currently one available. One. So, um, Larry. I'm looking. We should give these away. We should give this thing away at some point. Is that something we can explore? Uh, yeah, we can do. We can, we can find a way to do that. Oh, look at this thing. There it oh is. My God. <laughs> yeah, currently. Oh by the way, this current this is going up on. I mean, I don't. This is by a third party seller. It's currently two hundred eighty eight dollars. Oh. <gasps> oh my God! It's a third party <laughs> seller, but still. Now that's nice. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Put it on. Put it on. <laughs> Put it on. Wow. That's fantastic. What's that made out of? How do I look? I can't hear you. <laughs> you look here. Let's let's go back only here. Assume okay, is- that I look amazing. <laughs> Tough. Nigh invincible. You have no side view. There we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I like it. I always oh, thought my head was big, good. but maybe it's not big enough. This is uh, this is impressive. He, I wonder if he can see though. Yeah, I don't know if he can see. <laughs> I like that. That's your so, thumbnail, Larry. 
That's could you exactly. see with it on? Yeah, with it on properly? Uh, no, it is the same. It is so it is the Melania helmet. It looked like it was exactly the same. And you don't have that helmet yet. Uh oh no. I'm assuming I'd have to be, I'd have to defeat her, which right, I don't even sense. know where in the game she is. The game is, is gigantic. There's one last thing here. I don't know what this is, so let me just open it real quick. Oh, I think um, I know what it is. Maybe a sense of anticlimax here. Wasn't that the steel book? Yes. Oh, it's a stand. Oh, oh you think helmet? this is a mere stand for the helmet? This is the most powerful weapon in Elden <laughs> Ring. The helmet uh, katana. Okay, it's a stand for the helmet. So yeah. that is the Elden Ring collector's edition. Not available. I mean, pretty much. I'd all like sold for us to everywhere. explore. Thank you for bearing with me on what was, a, uh, I'm sure, a clumsy unboxing, but I didn't cut myself. It's sa- safety retraction. Um, keep your fingers on, germ free. Yep. Thank you. I enjoyed that, seeing the box uh, kind of hitting you in the face while you were like opening yeah. it. The it styrofoam was, noise I, was excellent. I, I, <laughs> thank you. 10 out of 10 yes. would unbox again. Yes. So that's awesome. Uh, there are still some of them out there. So um, if you're the ultimate Elden Ring fan, you're going to want that. And Larry, let's explore if we can, we can yeah. do we a, got a way to give it away. That, I think that would be great. And then when my wife comes in here and sees boxes and styrofoam all over the place. Um, the way my office looks all the time. Rip. So you'll get used to it. Uh, thank you for that, Jeff. We've got um, we got a couple of interviews this week that we want probably should get to. One of which is you can look can't see behind me because I actually, let me see. I've got it a little bit up here, but you can probably see it better on Jeff's screen. Because, oh yeah, on Jeff. Yeah, because the way it's Tunic and talk to the lead developer for Tunic. And actually, Rebecca, why don't you? Uh, I know you got the notes there. Why don't you go ahead and bring us into the interviews because uh, we got some good stuff this week. Yeah, so this week, Tunic arrived day and date on Xbox Game Pass. And so Woo. to celebrate, <laughs> uh, Larry that? Was spoke- that a squeal? <laughs> I was like, woo! <laughs> and then I, I, my voice cracked because I'm a teenager. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, um, so Larry spoke with Andrew Shouldis, who's the lead over um, working on Tunic. And then we also have an interview coming up from Jeff, uh, who spoke with Dirk Van Weldon, and he is from the game uh, Shredders, which is a snowboarding game. So I'm very excited to learn more about it. So let's go into the interviews. As we discussed earlier in the show, Tunic is coming day and date to Game Pass. Joining us today is Andrew Shouldis, who's the, uh, who's the, is the lead for Tunic. Andrew, great to see you. Hi, nice to be here. I'm so excited to to talk to you and uh, and talk about your title and, and day and date to Game Pass. This is so great. Now, I know that there's some a lot of folks that have been listening to the show and probably remember Tunic thinking, wait a minute, I think I remember seeing this title before because it, it's 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 there was a demo earlier this year, right? Yeah, absolutely. People were able to uh, play it on their Xboxes at home. And it was it was great. Now, uh, tell us about what the what the purpose of the demo was, what you learned, and and kind of uh, you know how about the about the main release coming up. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we you know used to show the game at events and things like that, but in in this day and age, it made a lot of sense to be like, hey, we should let people do this at home, and that was really incredible because there's it's just so wonderful to be able to see people, you know playing this thing and sort of like look over their shoulders and and watch them participate in in a thing without necessarily knowing that a developer is looking at them behind their or their shoulder uh, and now the full game is coming out um coming out day one on xbox game pass which is incredible and so many more people are going to be playing it and that's deeply exciting a little bit scary but mostly very exciting now we're seeing a little bit of the gameplay here. Now it, it, the, the game is it's very cute, and again, I remember playing the demo, and I'm sure a lot of my the viewers and listeners do. But tell us a little bit about the gameplay. I see a little fox here, and does the fox have a name? <laughs> Not really. No, the fox is you. We like to think of it as this is your avatar in the world, and you are going on this adventure. You know, and, and you're you're the one driving the little fox, but you're the one having the adventure. Tell us a little bit about what the gameplay is all about, though, because it's really it's, there's a lot a lot of elements to the gameplay, and I think it's really interesting what you've done here. Thanks. So it's uh, the the elevator pitch is that it's an uh, isometric action adventure about a tiny fox in a big world where you explore the countryside, uh, you fight monsters, and you find secrets. And yeah. so when, when people play it, you, you say that, and everyone goes, 
hmm, that sounds like Zelda. <laughs> That, those sorts of comparisons do get thrown around a lot, and there is there's definitely some inspiration there. Uh, and of all of those games, I'd say it's probably the the early ones. This idea of you know being plopped down into a big world and just sort of being told go out there and explore. Yeah, I mean that's and that's what it's all about. And the game, you know, I, I played a little bit of it as I said the demo, and I'm looking forward to the, the full release now. You know, as I, as we record this, it's now available on Xbox Game Pass, so go download it right now. But the game is full of secrets, right? You've got a lot of, you've taken a lot of effort to kind of build this world and create the, uh, you know, a, a place for people to play around in and have fun. And also you've hidden a lot of secrets. Yes, indeed. So my favorite sort of feeling when playing games is the moment of discovery when you realize that you know, the, the world has suddenly expanded in your mind a little bit. It's not just that you discovered that there's a bombable wall here. It's that you discovered that there are bombable walls in this world, and now every wall could have a secret in it. We really wanted to capture that sort of like old school feeling of wonder. One of the ways that we did that is by being uh, pages of the instruction manual scattered around the world. So as you play, you're going to fight monsters and find secrets and things. You'll find these instruction manual pages that are like, you know, old school uh, manuals that have all kinds of things in them, like you would expect from uh, from a manual, like uh, maps and tips and tricks and you know probably some secrets in the margins. Now it's funny you say that because I'm an I'm you know, I'm on the older end of you know most gamers and and you know you're a little bit younger than I but we do remember those the excitement of buying the game and and opening and and you know when your mom or dad was bringing you home that that's all you had until you were able to install it and download it or or you know really get it ready to go because the installation usually took a while so it's interesting that you leaned in on this this instruction manual. Um, you know, uh, instruction manual thing, because it's a lot of people don't even remember those anymore, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's uh, something that's a little bit lost these days. I think there are some people out there like you and I that are going to remember it, though. And th that same sort of feeling of, yeah, pouring over the pages. And, you know, I have memories of n not being able to play the games because, you know, someone else is playing right now, but I had the manual and I could flip through. And as a right. child, I had no idea what all these words meant. And I was seeing illustrations of things that I couldn't really comprehend. And it was just, it, it felt infinite, you know? Um, and that's, that's really exciting to me. And hopefully we've captured a little bit of that with, with Tunic. Yeah. To your point, maybe you, you couldn't use the console or the computer that you wanted to run that game on. And sometimes you just took the manual and went up to your bedroom and kind of were, were paging through it and making, you said, you said, making notes in the margins and thinking about, oh, this is what I'm going to do the next time I get there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think people are going to have that experience with Tunic. Now, now with Tunic, it's it's such an interesting game. Tell us about the design decision, you know, to go isometric and and kind of have this this really, you know, this this cute little fox in this cute little world. Yeah, absolutely. So I I love isometric perspective games. There's just this really nice rigidity to it that has a sort of classic feel, even though it's obviously like a a modern video game, and uh, it's isometric perspectives almost have this sort of like feeling of exploring a, a map like on a printed page you know because everything is is so sort of aligned to that grid and it also allows us to do sneaky things like hide things behind stuff you you know the camera angle is fixed so it's very intentional there are all kinds of secret paths that you can slip into like you could see there in the sewer someone just found a secret there um, and those are all over the place you know it's uh one of the things that i've been thinking about a lot as we're getting close to release is how i used to think oh no there aren't any secrets in this game because well, we, we knew all of them. We put them there, right? right? And so it might have felt like there weren't all those secrets. But now that we're seeing people play it for real, uh, you know, it's like, wow, no, we we really did pack this thing full of stuff for people to find. Yeah, and it's such it's such great to have a game like this on Game Pass because you, as game developers, you can focus on building a great game and you have this instant access to millions of people like that who are going to download the game and some people that maybe they would have never looked at this game but because they're game pass subscribers they can download it and take a look at it right yeah absolutely it's it's our hope that people are gonna you know all over the world all walks of life are gonna see this little fox and think like oh yeah i could i could be that Let, let's let's dive in <laughs> now we're, we're seeing we saw a little bit of the gameplay earlier there's some looks like there may be some boss battles and then some intermediate battles tell us a little bit about the combat 
Mm, yeah, absolutely. So another thing that people often say when they have sat down with it for a moment or two, they'll, they'll say, "Oh, this is really cute," but you know, it's it it's it can get hard. You know, we we've definitely you know just like some old school video games, it's got a little bit of challenge to it in places, and I think that's part of feeling you know brave in a hostile world is you know having challenges that. Are, are you know worth your time and attention um, so specifically some of the things that we have are um, you can see there we've got a combat dodge that's um, and, a, and a stamina meter associated with it stamina works a little bit differently than you might expect with some games it's more of a risk reward system so you can always attack and you can always even do your dodge it's just that if you're at zero stamina points you're at a disadvantage you know sure. maybe you don't have as many iframes maybe you're gonna take more damage so it's really up to the player you know if they really want to go all out, and do that last dodge they can and they can keep dodging but at that point they're putting themselves at risk and i think people are gonna have a good time sort of figuring out what their play style is with this and there's all kinds of other stuff too like you know secret techniques and uh well a lot of them are secret so maybe i shouldn't say <laughs> that's a good point point. and as, as you said this is really it's a game about discovery whether you're discovering the weapons the characters the the enemies or the, or the secrets that you mentioned earlier. It's about just enjoying and exploring the world, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's this really particular feeling of looking at a world and just feeling it be ripe with possibility. You know, you just want to explore that space and, and really find things, you know, not just feel like the game is doling out rewards at the appropriate time, but feeling like, wow, I, I really figured this out. I really found this cool thing that maybe my friends didn't find out about. And that's another cool thing about it being day one on Xbox Game Pass is that I think, I think a lot of people are going to be exploring and sharing their experiences with one another. And that just is really heartwarming. Tell, tell us about your team. I mean, you're the, the lead for Tunic. Tell us about your team. Are you all located? Where are you all located? Are you distributed? Tell us about that. Yeah, we're, we're spread out a little bit. So I'm the, the primary developer, but we also have a stellar audio team. Um, so uh, Kevin Regami of Power Up Audio, um, whose work you've almost certainly heard before, uh, is doing sound design and uh, 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 Life Formed, which is a uh, uh, Terrence Lee and Janice Kwan is doing the soundtrack. Um, we also have help from Eric Billingsley, who, who came on board to help, you know, put the finishing touches on a lot of the, the environmental design in the game. That's sort of the, that's the, the core team there. And we've got lots of ancillary support from, from publisher Finji as well. And that, well, that's great to hear because, you know, we're, we're just excited and the beauty of, you know, of the developers like yourself, of, you know, small and nimble indie developers are able to really, really iterate a little bit. Tell me a little bit about the difference between maybe the demo that we played earlier this year that maybe some folks did and, and the final release. What are some of the things you learned? Hmm. Yeah. So the differences are, are going to be great. Obviously, it's the full game now. Um, but, and maybe you'll go through some areas that you recognize, but, you know, a lot of the secrets have been changed a little bit. There are some tweaks to mechanics that people are going to notice. But one of the cool things about uh, being able to see people play that demo was getting a good understanding of you know what people want to find where they want to go you know there was a really tough monster that we hit away in the demo sort of as an Easter egg but people just really got into it and they were they were really good they they made it their personal mission to go and conquer this giant skeleton and uh, yeah I think I think people are gonna enjoy maybe you know revisiting the areas that they saw in the demo and then just I, I'm sort of astounded when I look at it and be like, wow, this is a this is kind of a big video game for a team this small. So that's it's gonna be cool to see. Now are all of the are the levels we saw some of the levels in some of the gameplay a moment ago, are they all handmade? Are they procedural? Tell us about that. Everything's handcrafted. So the world is this interconnected place. You've seen a few areas and there are a bunch more. And I think one of the things that people are going to find is not only are there little passages like, oh, I can slip behind here and there's a treasure. That's neat. Um, but they're going to realize, oh, wait, this area is connected to that area, is connected to this area. And that's entirely intentional. The hope is that people are going to play the game and they'll, they'll probably play through it in a particular way. But as you go, you're going to realize, hey, wait a second. I I could have done this in an entirely different order. I could have, now that I know about this, I could have gotten this. And now that I know about this, I could maybe approach this in an entirely different way. And um, uh, I think the, the speedrun community is maybe going to have a blast with this, I hope. <laughs> 
Interesting. Now, now, the, as you're playing with your character, you're really unlocking weapons within the game itself and maybe some abilities. There's not really a concept of, of leveling up your character. Is that accurate? Oh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you should flip through the manual sometime and see if there's something about that. Who knows? Well, I don't want to give too much away. I mean, it's it's such a it's such a lovely moment of discovery as as we discussed, where people can kind of find those secrets and and discover the gameplay and not have, frankly not have too much spoiled. I mean, we saw some of the gameplay. You know, we saw some of the we saw the demo earlier this year, Andrew. And more importantly, it's now available on Xbox Game Pass. So I'm looking forward to everyone get, sending their feedback and hit us up, uh, uh, hit me up on Twitter. And you know, I know you've got Twitter as well. I'll put that up here so that people can hit you up. But I really appreciate your time today, and congratulations on launch. Thank you so much. This is a real pleasure, and I'm so excited. We are getting into the end of the ski season here in the Northern Hemisphere, but. Don't worry, as the snow starts to melt, we have a whole new way to shred on the mountain. That's because Shredders is now available on Xbox through Xbox Game Pass. And here to talk, tell us all about it, uh, joining us actually from Belgium, from Brussels, Belgium, Dirk Van Welden, the captain at Full Punch, the developer of uh, Shredders. Congratulations on launch, sir. Yeah, thank you. It was a uh, uh, heavy road and we had a lot of fun, but yeah. It took us a couple of years to finish this game, but I was super happy and super stoked that it's finally out. That's awesome. Uh, so I, first, I would love for you to talk about what type of snowboard game this is. Because, you know, a certain, people of a certain age, uh, me, when I when I grew up playing, you know, snowboard games, it's very cartoony, you know, doing things that could never happen in real life. And so when I, as I started playing Shredders uh, a few days ago, I noticed... Okay, I'm working up to to a 540, you know, which is uh, you know just learning really from the basics, not immediately trying to hold all the different buttons at the same time and do you know ten backflips. And so, I, I would love for you to just talk about how you decided this, you know, a more realistic angle uh, for yeah. snowboarding. Well, uh, first of all, um, when I bought my first Xbox, uh, I had Ant on it, and uh, Ant was one of my favorite snowboarding games, and it had a sense like it had also this kind of balance between uh, realistic movement and then the snowboarding itself was was just, it felt great. It wasn't super easy, but it felt great, um, and then you had like the whole... Uh, influx of uh, extreme sports games and then in the end like yeah Tony Hawk and I was like oh this is so awesome and then at, at a certain moment there was skate like out of nowhere and people asking why are people making skate like there's already Tony Hawk why is skate there and a lot of people were kind of skeptical at first but when they played it they saw like okay this is it's a completely different type of game it's more about making even like a simple 180 feel fun, more about real life challenges. Still not a simulator, but kind of like balancing it more towards simulation. And we kind of like me and uh, Marcus, the CTO, we were kind of like, we had a similar vision. We already worked on a snowboarding game that had like really nice animations. And I wanted like realistic slopes and, and cool missions and storyline in there. And just the two combined, I feel that we made something that yeah could be described as like a skate of snowboarding. <laughs> we were both avid snowboarders, so we really wanted something in there. But yeah, it's not a game that might be for everyone. Like, for example, if you take Rise Republic, it's mostly focused on racing. It's really nice. It's made for that. It does a great job at that. Our game is more like um, it's more about style and learning the tricks themselves on the go. Just like if you're playing Rocket League for the first time, you're just driving to a ball and you'll do something. But if you're an advanced Rocket League player, you're fly all the time. And you'll see like if you're online and you'll see other players, you'll see just with the same amount of stats because you don't have any stats that are growing, but the same amount of feeling, you'll be able to do way more just because you're learning how to how to write. Um, yeah, and it's it's really about feeling and and trying to get as realistic as possible to the real thing while still being fun for everyone. I think that's why yeah. it was made. <laughs> that's no, that's all. I think that's a great description. The skate of snowboarding is like right there. Uh, so I, I, <laughs> I snowboard not very well, but I, what's I do think that you really captured the feeling of being on the mountain. And I, and it's very hard, I think, to kind of describe that, but you feel like you're outside when you're there. And and my character's not 
making turns that are impossible to make in real life because you would catch an edge. It's not, you're not just like, you can't just move back and forth in that way. And I, I, there's just something about it where it's like, oh yeah, this this really feels like snowboarding. And so um, kudos on doing that. But I, I would love to talk. We oh, were just looking you. at some some cool, uh, probably later maps in the game. And, uh, and there is this... Um, you know, a, a lot of diversity um, in the natural landscape. These these massive parks. So, what what was like the most fun area for for you to create? Well, the, the cool thing is, like, it's, it started like the whole mountain range. We we figured out oh, this is kind of impossible to make something like that with just a team of like uh, ten full time people. So, like fifteen people worked on this, and we're like, okay, this needs to be done procedurally. So we generate a, a mountain range that was as realistic as possible, and then we start looking like, okay, we want to have different spots. What are we seeing in snowboard movies? So, like, you have the typical yeah, ski domain, and that's frozen wood where you, uh, you'll see it from time to time. And this is, for example, an industrial area. There's a whole bunch of movies that are like in these industrial-like areas. So we kind of capture it as well. Uh, side hits. You saw Arthur Longo doing side hits on on the road gaps. Uh, we have um, uh, events that are inspired, like, like locations that are inspired on events, uh, real snowboarding events. So all of these small things, even like a, an Italian village, there was a snowboarding movie with like a, a super nice Italian village, and they were snowboarding through those through the streets. And we wanted to capture that and bring it into a video game. And yeah, just working on all those different locations, it also it has a complete different feeling. Like in the Italian village, you can't go too fast. It's like keeping control high mountain areas like most people in most games would just go straight on and super fast but you see that it's super hard to control so you have to manage your speed to do like a decent uh, jump and while in parks you can just go full ahead because they're shaped to have that specific speed mm -hmm. and you can do super big triple course or quad course or whatever uh, while still landing and continuing so most of them were it's just very diverse. And actually for those parks, it was so specific that we hired someone who was doing parks in real life. So the guy who's making oh. the parks actually shapes parks. <laughs> um, and yeah, for him, it was super fun. It was like the best thing he's ever done because he shaped something and he could try it immediately. And all of it is based kind of on the actual like physics, like our gravity is the same gravity as you would have. Of course, people are flying higher. Kickers are bigger. So it looks a bit more slow than in real life but still that's actual it's actually you would fly that high if if uh <laughs> if you would go at that speed to a specific kicker yeah we made some things more fun like doing an ollie for example you, you jump higher than in real life that's kind of balancing between realism and fun i guess of course watching the winter olympics recently i, I don't know what real life is anymore because some of the folks especially in <laughs> yeah. life, getting so high it's it's like it, it was just crazy so um uh, what I thought was really interesting about Shredders is is that there's a story element. You start off as you know a couple of YouTubers uh, who aren't very popular, and you know, and like the reason you move to the next mountain is because you cause a little bit too much trouble, and you you just need to leave, and you take the bus to the to, to another another ski slope. Um, so, but you did have major riders like Olympian uh, Jamie Anderson appear. So, how was it? You know, collaborating. With some of the biggest names in snowboarding, you talked about a terrain developer, but but some of the the borders themselves. What, what did they bring to the game? Well, it was super funny to get them into the game because it wasn't the plan at first. And then Seb of the book, he's a uh, he's a Belgian snowboarder, but he appears in a lot of movies. So that's uh, a great style of snowboarding. Um, and and we just invited him because we wanted a real snowboarder to get to test our game. And it was like two years ago, like a very early version. And he was like, oh, this is awesome. Can I be in the game? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> the team was like, okay, but then we'll have to have more snowboarders. And then someone was like, yeah, but I can, I have those contacts. I know all these people. So we just set up uh, like a, a list of people that we really liked, different kind of aspects of snowboarding because they all have their unique style. And almost everyone immediately said yes. And we just tried working with them, uh, as, with them as much as possible. We recorded their voices. We scanned in all their clothing. Um, and it was all remote because of COVID. We, we were mm -hmm. hoping that we could fly to these resorts and ski ourselves. But yeah, in the end, maybe for the best so we could just work on the video game. But still, uh, yeah, it, it was pretty awesome to see all those people and trying to get also... For example, their replays, we've watched a lot of their real snowboarding and trying to kind of capture how they snowboard and translating that into movement. Uh, so, yeah, it was uh, 
was a very interesting experience and they've all been like super helpful and they've most of them are super stoked to to play it themselves so some uh, like so someone like Marcus Cleveland is a big gamer uh so yeah i guess he'll be playing the game at, today athletes in gaming that's like uh that that's yeah. the thing yeah and i'm sure you have fun now you got to bring it around to the mountain to them to you know just take an xbox series s and you know bring it bring it yeah. to them let them play it there <laughs> You can, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll help you out with that. Um, it seemed like you had a lot of fun making the game here in these stories. And I noticed something, you know, every sports game, especially extreme sports game, they, they lead off with a warning. And yours said the shredding in this game was performed by indie game developers. Did, did you, did you do any of the mocap like that? Or, or you guys just actually, we did not, not, <laughs> we did some of the mocap, not uh, like you'll see the looking back or, that was actually mocap at our studio, so all the cutscenes obviously. But like the actual in-air grabs and stuff, like those, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of tech behind the movement system and trying to sync it with the physics itself. And I think that's one of the craziest aspects of the of the game, and it's been in development for several years, like way more than this video game itself. Uh, and and so yeah, we kind of like at any point we can like pause the game and see like okay, this is kind of unrealistic, and then we kind of tweak it. And it helps that like um, uh, me and Marcus, like Marcus is the is the guy is doing most of the animations in game, like the procedural ones. Uh, he's actually also a snowboarder, like an avid snowboarder. So we know what to do. Like we know if you turn your arms like this, where you will head out, and and and. When I was young, I would just also go to a jump and just try stuff out. <laughs> so I've broken a lot of bones in that process, but uh, still, yeah. As long as if you're a snowboarder yourself, you know what's going to happen if you do a specific move, and it can it can be like 100 realistic because otherwise you'll react too slowly or you won't wouldn't have fun. Mm. But yeah, that's kind of the balance. And, yeah. Awesome. Thank, Dirk, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I hope that you are able to get a few more runs out here, uh, some spring skiing. Uh, still, Well, there's still some snow there. I'm sure you can have a couple bluebird days uh, if you're able to get out there soon. Congratulations on launch. And for the rest of you, Shredders, it is available now through Xbox Game Pass. So download it. Give it a try. Thank you to Andrew and Dirk for coming on the show and talking about Tunic and Shredders. Both look really cool. I'm excited to try Shredders personally as a snowboarder. Um, I don't know. Jeff, Larry, Jeff, have you guys been playing that one? Uh, I have not had a chance to check it out yet. Jeff, how about you? Yeah, I've played uh first hour or so. Uh, some of the questions that you, you heard me ask came from, uh, there's someone on our team who's like a much better snowboarder and uh, <laughs> he played a lot. And, uh, and so he helped me out with some of those. But yeah, it's a... It definitely you just you feel the snow if that makes it makes sense if you your snowboard like it but you don't always feel that and I would say certain like sort of super extreme sports you, it's it's fun it's more arcadey this I kind of like I really felt like I was carving I guess right um, you weren't just like on a on a rope like there's certain things you can't do or you will catch an edge and just like fall over and and I felt like it captured that pretty well so yep. yeah uh, enjoying it. Awesome. We got uh, we got some news coming up here, Jeff. I know you've got a, a bunch of tabs open there. Why don't you get get ripping on those? All right, all right. So uh, I, we just talked about Tunic surprise launch into Xbox Game Pass, which was awesome, and that was part of a larger ID at Xbox showcase on Twitch, which was hosted by good friends of Xbox, good friends of the show, Andrea, Renee, and uh, Okadrian. Uh, Adrian's uh, they're awesome folks and uh, big proponents of indie games. And so a number of games were announced during that time. Definitely recommend uh, if you check out Xbox Wire, uh, click on the ID at Xbox section, you, uh, a lot of talk about a lot of those games. And so um, some really cool stuff. They also had a lot of, if you want to watch the VOD, it's over on uh, twitch.tv slash twitch gaming or twitch.tv slash Xbox. There's a lot of like professional wrestlers that were in, in the stream, it was all over. It was there's a lot of good stuff, but really deep dives into some really cool games, um, like Floppy Night, and I don't know. It was just some really cool stuff. So um, definitely recommend you take a look at that because uh, the indie game space is just like thriving, and it's just really cool that there's always new stuff to play that can be dramatically different one from the next. You have yeah. a, a favorite indie game recently? Uh, you know, I 
I think probably because I, because I did the interview with Tunic and I have been playing that for a little bit. So I'm really enjoying Tunic so far. It just feels, and I even said it during the interview, it feels got a little Breath of the Wild-esque. For us, it's not in the Breath of the Wild like uh, like Elden Ring. It's a little It's a little different than that, but I'm enjoying that so far. Yeah, honestly, I feel like the line between like indie game is getting blurred, blurred so much yeah. these days because indie games used to be like, you know, it, they almost felt like projects like a long time ago. Mm-hmm. But now it's like it's really hard to tell the difference between like, a tri- you know, like a really full fledged release and then like an indie game. So I don't know. I mean, I would love to hear more suggestions for games like it, like really good indie games that people have found lately. So, um, you know, head over to on Spotify. We're taking uh you know answers oh, yeah. um like input from from the community so if you guys have any recent indie games that you've been trying or any that you think look really cool we would love to hear about them and get a heads up um, yeah scroll down if you're, if you're watching here. on spotify you just scroll down and you'll see a little question i'll put it in there and it'll pop up and we'll and rebecca maybe next week you can read some of those suggestions and attribute it to certain people uh, yeah larry cool. i teed you up but yes. one of your favorite indie games of the last year was the pedestrian wasn't yeah. it I, it, 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 it was well it was it's it's funny because if you go if scroll back the video or listen i was hesitating because to rebecca's point i was like was that an indie game or not because it feels like the 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 lines are blurred but yeah that absolutely was one of my favorites yes yeah, yeah it is it is it is difficult to to tell sometimes but i do believe that would ca- qualify as an indie title mm-hmm. uh so yes I mean, I've been on the show in a couple of weeks, uh, which is why what I other news do we have? <laughs> evolved about Elden Ring. Um, but uh, you may have missed, we didn't have a chance to talk about from last week, an update on the Xbox sustainability efforts. Oh, yeah. And there's a whole blog post on that. But um, there's something that you can do. It's something that I have done um, to save a significant amount of electricity. It's like, yep. what can I do? Sometimes you look at things, you look at like these big intractable problems, like what's my you know, go global do? warming. What can I do? But you, there's something that anyone who owns an Xbox can do, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's really, if you have an Xbox series X or S, you just go in there and I believe we've got that on the Xbox one. You can just go in there and we have a setting called energy saver mode. So you just go to settings, sleep mode and startup sleep mode, energy saver. I mean, yeah, it's, pretty much straightforward to do that. And with that, it consumes, if I remember correctly, 20 times less energy. And it'll still take the updates for the games. It'll be a little bit slower to turn on when you're waiting it for the boot up, but that's a, that's a small trade-off for the energy that you're going to be saving when you use uh, when you use energy saver mode. So if you've got your console, I recommend turning it on. I know I have it on. Jeff, hopefully you and Rebecca have it turned on. Uh, but it's really, yeah, it's really straightforward and helps, helps, uh, save the energy. So that is your, that is like, you know, your simple go do right now is go set energy saver mode on your console. One of the reasons I didn't used to have it on energy saver mode, I had it on standby where we turn on quickly. And really the difference in turning it on is like, I don't know, seven seconds, something like that. Yeah. But, um, was because I wanted to take the updates, but the fact that we We now you are able the system's able to update games are able to update while on energy saver mode. There's really no reason not, not to use it. And yep. so, uh, like you said, highly recommend you do check to make sure I have it on. Cause I think I may have shut it off or I was testing something. So I'm just going to quietly go. Larry, Larry, don't be a do as I say person. I know that's why I want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. Good. We're going to hold you to it. We're going to hold you to, it. I'm going to audit all your consoles. Cause I know you have several, yep, hey, let's talk about more. On. It was on, it was on. You're off camera, so we'll just have to trust you. <laughs> we trust you, yeah. We yeah, it was it. on. We trust you. Uh, so let's talk more games. Game Pass. You talked about Shredders. Shredders now <clears throat> available as part of Xbox Game Pass, and a number of games that were announced this week that are coming to Xbox Game Pass, uh, such as uh, the Dungeon of Nahulbuk, uh, Tainted Grail, Zero Escape, uh, which is a uh, the nonary games, which is uh, not the type of game we always see on. Xbox uh, that is coming on cloud console and PC for Game Pass. Uh, Norco F1 2021 had a lot of fun with that earlier in the year. Uh, was sort of my introduction to F1 racing. Well, it's coming to console through the magic of EA Play if you are an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate member. Uh, Crusader Kings 3, one of the best games of, of the year last year on PCs. It's coming to console through the ID at Xbox. Coming to Game Pass on Xbox Series S and X only. It is a next-gen game uh, coming out on March 29th. And here's one that I think we'll be talking about. Yes. Weird West coming out on March 31st, available day one. What on makes X- it weird, on Game Jeffrey? Pass. 
Hmm? Yeah. What makes it weird? Um, it's a dark fantasy of reimagining of the Wild West. So um, just taking a look at this game, looking at some footage of it, looking at the visuals. This looks like a really interesting title. Yeah. And um, it, up, uh, yeah. it comes out in about two weeks. So definitely keeping an eye on this. Uh, again, day one with Game Pass for cloud, console, and PC. Fantastic. Yeah, Rebecca. it looks interesting. It almost looks kind of like... Um, like almost like Telltale games, Telltale Borderlands style, like art wise, looks very cool. That cell Sorry, shaded that we all loved. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Nifty. Yes, so it was announced, uh, yeah, about a year and a half ago. It's coming from uh, Wolf Eye Studio, so um, should be cool to should be cool to look at. All right, Rebecca, I don't yes. call in a lot of favors, but since you sort of you know you did me wrong on the Japanese whiskey thing, <laughs> I need a new. I need a new hoodie or a polo. These look cost. <laughs> cost. Wait a minute. Minecraft. These look awesome. Tell us about it. Yeah, tell us about this because I'm really excited about this. Yeah, we have a new collection that launched this week with Lacoste. Um, we actually held a an, a an event in Paris last week, and why did you not go? The, uh, I so I didn't work super closely on this one, I and see. as you know, like business travel is still a little. Sketchy. You know, um, with the pandemic, but we did have some folks from Redmond and Stockholm who flew out to Paris and went to the launch event. It looked really cool. I did have FOMO, so thank you for that. Um, but the collection itself is really cool. It's a lot of like, uh, like kind of athleisure lifestyle wear, which is obviously very in right now. Um, we had uh, some really cool like in stuff game that launched with it too. So mm -hmm. there was a free map that's available in the Minecraft Marketplace. Um, that's I think it's called Croco Island. Um, it's pretty yeah. neat. It has uh, a lot of Lacoste and crocodile themed stuff. Um, Are they playing if you tennis? Check out our <laughs> yeah. If you check out the Minecraft.net blog post, you'll learn a little bit about crocodiles also. Uh, I think I read something like crocodiles have like 80 teeth and they replace them like five times in their lifetime or something like that, which is kind of wild. Um, and then there's also a server that we launch. I know, don't ask. I can't, I can't elaborate on it further than that. Um, Larry, bring up the visuals. Let's see these things. Hold on. Wanna, let's me, go shopping. Come on. on. Give me, give oh, yeah, me a moment. I'll get it loaded. Our in producer's here. asleep at the wheel. Hey, hey, hey. I'm trying to produce <laughs> and host and he's do all just, these things. He's enjoying listening to me talk about crocodiles with my half-witted knowledge. Um, but then also in game, there's a server that we launched. And so it takes different elements from the free map and then makes it uh, competitive. So it's actually a PVP server. Um, so, you know, if you want to try it, that out, highly recommend it. Um, oh, yeah. You got to show us the goods, Larry. Can you scroll down? Yeah. So that's a screenshot from Co Croco Island. Looks pretty cool. I like crocodiles. I saw some really cute crocodile Here videos we over go. the weekend. Yeah. And then... These That's are the some right uh, content creator friends who also agreed to double as models. I think they look great. They do. Um, in the different Lacoste uh, partnered clothing, which uh, also looks I love this. cool. I, love I actually this really stack. like Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I really like that white top that she's wearing. It's basically the same thing I'm wearing right now, but cooler. So um, Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Anything, this it's Mari Takahashi. Anything that she's yeah. she's doing is cool. Like that's just that's just how it goes. So is that is that because yeah. I have to, I, have to, I want to bring something up after you're all done, Rebecca? Because have at it. We're talking about Lacoste. We're talking about alligators. And who strolls into the show wearing the wrong alligator? Wait, <laughs> look at this. Oh, <laughs> the gator right there. And that that's and that's funny. help me help me show my school spirit, Rebecca, with that yellow. Um, that yellow Minecraft Lacoste hoodie. Like, why would you like you? You're Syracuse people. There's n there's no connection here. But like, up upgrade my gator to a crop. <laughs> yes. Do okay. It. I like it. Right. Like the orange. All right. But yeah. I do too. I do too. <laughs> I know. I was I was hoping that we could get some stuff from the collection. I'm still working on it. We'll All see. right. Well, Jeff Jeff would be happy to do an unboxing, as would I. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, maybe. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'll modeling, whatever, whatever you want to do. All, All right. right, let's talk about a couple more news bits. Yeah. So do you remember Ashen? Uh, yeah, came of out a few years ago. It was made, uh, it was sort of a, it had comparisons to a Souls, a Souls game. Uh, it was made by A44 Games, I believe in New Zealand. 
And really cool game. Um, and they announced their next game, which is going to be uh, coming or launching day one with Xbox Game Pass, and it's called Flintlock. So there's a trailer over on Xbox Wire. Um, very excited for this. Like their first game was Ashen, and and that that if that's your first game, like that's that's a great start. So um, it's been a few years. I want to say that was 2018. That was the game that I hit 100,000 gamer score on. Congratulations! Uh, so thank you. That was a couple of years ago at this point. But anyway. Uh, Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn. We'll be hearing more about it. We don't have a date, but we do know that if you're an Xbox Game Pass member, you'll be you're playing in. it day one. You're in. You're in. So what are you doing next week? What are, we, what are you doing on March, I don't know, 24th? Uh, you're going to tell, you're gonna tell me. You're going to tell me. What are we uh, doing? We're going to be watching uh, Halo, the, the TV series. Oh, that's on right. Plus. So, uh, that's, so next week, uh, there is uh, a trailer. I know there's like some premiere... And, you know, I, I, I'm sure they'll be walking the red carpet and doing all that stuff that they do with, uh, you know, in Hollywood. But uh, we all get to watch it. And if you don't have Paramount Plus, first of all, if you're a soccer fan, Paramount Plus has been very good to me uh, in terms of getting, uh, you know, Champions League and stuff like that. But if you are not, starting on March 23rd, Xbox Game Pass Ultimate members are getting 30 days of Paramount Plus uh, free with perks. So you can claim it on the 23rd, and then you'll be able to watch uh, the first uh, 30 days, um, you know, of the show. It, the show is not bingeable. I think it's I think it's uh, one every week. Yeah, it's episodic. It'll it'll which drop. I like because then yeah. everyone's talking about it at the same time. Yeah, uh, that's my personal taste. Um, some people like to sit down and watch eight hours of TV at once. Not what I can do. Anyway, not not when Elden too Ring busy with Elden Ring. <laughs> true, it's true. Anyways, uh, so uh, well, a week from now we'll have watched and we can. We can talk about episode one, so that'll All be right. good. And last thing, just want to mention a free trial uh, that is going on now uh, until March 21st. That is Diablo 2 Resurrected. Yep. Diablo 2, many agree, one of the best games ever made. Certainly fun. Upgraded, resurrected, if you will. And so if you haven't tried it, uh, you can try it up to three hours for free. So just look for that on your dash. All right. We have to wrap it up because I actually uh, I just realized apparently part of my house is circuit breaker blue, so I have to go deal with that. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> kept the show going. Well, That's good. Yes, exactly. So, anyway, well, th- it's nice to have you guys back this week. <laughs> thanks, gang. All right, great work, everybody. Rebecca, again, great job last week. Jeff, thanks for the interview this week and the news. We'll be back next week with more interviews, more show. We got some great stuff lined up for you guys. So, thanks again. Anything you guys want to say before we roll out? Have a nice weekend. No. All right. <laughs> you were good. You were rolling. I didn't want to stop you. All right. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye, yeah. everybody.